Good morning, everybody. I'm Jerry Hermer, as it says there, the Aviation Advisor. Have the next slide, please. The presentation which we'll be giving today, um, will, is, as you can see from the program, is our, our helicopter journey. I'm going to cover the helicopter journey from when we first started in 2001 and bring you up to date with where we are now. I will then hand over to uh, Captain Dave Kelly of Bond Air Services, who will describe to you uh, the operation at Cambridge, which he has been involved with, with the flying the 145 since it came into service in April. That's last April, rather. Um, as mentioned by Sir William, um, Bond Air Services supply all the aviation uh, requirements for the charity, and, and Dave is the senior contract pilot, and uh, he therefore runs it more on a local event, so he's in a very good place to tell you what actually goes on the flying side. So a little bit about my background. Um, this is a complete coincidence. When I was told that this, this event would be here, I was delighted. This is my old school. Fifty years ago I was here, and I, I was amazed to come here um, to do the recce for the helicopters and find the old school is in still a great shape, and I'm really proud to be here today. And in particular this room, when I was here, this was a no-go room, it was the staff room, and you only came in here if you were in trouble. <laughs> so it's great to be here today. Thank you. So at this stage... I'm just going to uh, describe to you the term HEMS. It occurred to me, uh, Alistair's already mentioned it, you may not actually know what it, it means. HEMS is a, an acronym for Helicopter Medical Emergency Service. Um, and not to be confused with an air ambulance service. H a HEMS capability requires a specific approval by the CA for bond air services to enable them to land at no notice sites where they haven't been before and to get as close to the patient as possible and also to fly in reduced weather limits compared with normal um, commercial air transport uh, limits. An air ambulance flight on the other hand is just on commercial limits and cannot land at sites which have not been pre -recced. Okay. So what I'd like to do initially is talk about um, our first aircraft. This is, on the left here, is a Bolko B0105, manufactured uh, firstly in 1970 by a German company called Messerschmitt Bolko and Blum. Um, this company merged later on with the French helicopter company Aerospatio and became Eurocopter, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. The Messerschmitt bit, I think, has gone into history. Uh, it'll be a familiar name to all of you as a Second World War fighter and so on. I, I'm not aware that there is any, there are any aircraft using that name anymore, which is a shame. So this aircraft, in fact, was the first light twin-engine helicopter to be available in the, first, in the Western world. Although at the time there were several single-engine helicopters available, this had the advantage of having two engines with the increased safety, which is a very important aspect with commercial operations, and in fact is a legal requirement for HEMS and air ambulance work. Our aircraft there, you will see it's got police written on it, as well as the East Anglian Air Ambulance, and you can also see a little pod here. And this was our first attempt, which we had a trial, which Patrick and I were involved in, in about 1996-97, um, where we carry the police on board as well as the paramedics. There was the pilot, the, um, the policeman, and as well as a paramedic. The, the problem there was that it was all a little bit cramped and so on, but uh, it served to show there was a need in East Anglia. Yes, um, I just remembered now that the, it was of great use to us, and it was funded um, by the local business. It was Bernard Matthews, as a f familiar name, uh, Ang uh, Anglian Windows as well as Norwich Union. And it was successful, but we decided to um, carry on as just as an air ambulance in the future if we were able to get appropriate funding. Just as another interest with this particular, uh, the B0105, those of you who have seen the latest um, James Bond film 
Wool Spectre, as it's called, may recall the early scenes of amazing helicopter manoeuvres over a built-up area. That was a B0105. And that's a remarkable thing uh, when you think this aircraft's 45 years old, still to be used in a, a modern film production. And our helicopter, as well, took part in a James Bond film in 1987 on site in Morocco. Um, Living Daylights was the name. I don't remember the film, but apparently that's what happened. So, in 2001, we decided to go ahead and launch our air ambulance using this aircraft, and it was one day a week, that's all, and a 10-hour shift. The reason for that was we didn't have sufficient funds, but we used this because the aircraft's available, made available by Sterling Helicopters for that one day a week, which was great, actually. Um, it did actually demonstrate that we could do something with it. We were very fortunate, because Andrew Edgerton and Smith and myself um, were made aware that the AA, the Automobile Association, um, were providing funds for start-up air ambulances. And we negotiated a deal with them where they provided full funds for a year. So <coughs> that really got us going. Um, so as the, as the charity matured, we realised that that aircraft was too small for our, for our operation. We were starting to have doctors on board. Because of their increased cap uh, medical capabilities, we needed more kit. So we needed to look at some other aircraft. So we went to the BK-117, which is the aircraft over there on the far left. Um, this was, first came into operation in 1982, but we started operation of this in 2006. This was a huge step forward from the 105, having far more space and a lot more power and range and endurance. Unfortunately, in 2011, Sterling Helicopters ceased operation, so we went out to tender again, and Bond fortunately won that tender, and we had to choose the right aircraft to move forward. Our preference was to continue with the 117 because it had been so successful. But Bond recommended to us that there was a new, more, far more modern version of the 117 coming out. It would be better if we waited for that to happen, which is what we did. Um, so in the meantime, we operated with the EC-135 until the 145, the H-145, the newest one, the one nearest us, came into service. The one in the middle is the first version of the 145, which we missed out, which was the right decision. It was just a, a development of the 117 with a bigger cabin uh, and a little bit more on range. But you'll notice from this one, it's got a different tail. Those have got the traditional tail rotors with the attendant noise problems and uh, danger of, of people getting a collision with them. Here we have a shrouded tail rotor, if you like, it's a shrouded fan, which is called a Fenestron. That is much quieter and, and it is much more efficient as well and, of course, a lot safer. So, at this stage, I think I'll try and solve a bit of the confusion over titles of the aircraft. With Eurocopter, they title all their aircraft with the letters EC, hence EC-145 and EC-135. But Airbus later took over, in fact, last year, took over the name um, changed to them, and they changed it to be the H-145, which is what we've got now. So... To avoid the confusion, they are all H-145s. And just a quick thing here, I've got a table here to show the number of helicopters built. The 105, which we talked about, you can see 1,400 were made nearly, and there's still 500 in service. The 145 series consists of all three here, and there's a total of 1,250, with our H-145 being in that lot. I believe now the order has gone up to about 180. So it is a very successful helicopter already. And I've just put this slide together very quickly to show you the, the huge differences in performance as we've moved through the years. There we are down with the cruising speed of the 105 at around 110, and the 145T2, now the H145, is up to 137 knots. That's a, a great deal of uh, improvement. And of course, that makes the aircraft more effective because it can get to the jobs quicker and it will help to keep uh, Alistair happy with response times. The next um, part on the right there 
is the range. Obviously, we don't need to go up to Newcastle, I think, but what it demonstrates is the radius of action and that we can stay airborne for a lot longer and we can go to separate jobs without having to refuel, which is a very important aspect. Again, it keeps Alistair happy because our response times are better. And the lower uh, chart is again showing the huge increase in cabin volume to allow the doctors, the paramedic, to have more space to work on the patients and have more care. It is a great aircraft for all that and it really justifies the extra expense of having a better aircraft. So, uh, as already mentioned, the third slide, please, next slide, please. As already mentioned, the um, second 145 um, has just been delivered. Uh, it's been used for crew training at the moment. It's here today, and with a bit of luck, it will be operational by the end of next week. So, our journey, in our journey, we have grown from one 30-year-old helicopter operating one day a week for a 10-hour shift to now where we're operating two helicopters in two bases. At Norwich, we'd fly a 12-hour shift, uh, one 12-hour shift, and at Cambridge, two shifts lasting 16 hours, 365 days of the year, including Christmas. So before handing over to Dave, I'd just like to add one other very important thing. is part of our contract with Bonds is that they must supply the aircraft available to be available to us for 98% of the standby time. That is a tall order, we know that, and it's particularly difficult to, make, to achieve that when you're bringing a new type. I know that from my own experience. So we're very pleased to say that in the last two months, Bond have achieved 99% or in excess of 99% availability, and this month looks good, so it could even be better. And the previous months, it was just edging up to 98%. I think you'll all agree that that is a great achievement and we're very grateful to Bonds for uh, achieving this. So on that very positive note, I'll hang over, hand over to Dave Kelly.